There are large variations in how even young children interact with the world around them, and with their own mothers. Some children are very independent, seemingly not needing their mothers for reassurance, and others are excessively clingy. In this video, we'll look at Mary Ainsworth's attempt to categorize the early attachment styles of these infants and try to find out which is the best adapted style. We'll also look at how Ainsworth's technique for assessing attachment, called the strained situation, has been used all around the world, finding some interesting similarities in attachment styles, but also some clear differences between cultures. The PsychBoost flashcard app has a new feature. Test yourself with over 1,500 multiple choice questions, including every topic on A-level or GCSE psychology. Try Paper 1 for free right now. And Patreon supporters can watch PsychBoost videos ad-free, learn from over 17 hours of exclusive exam tutorial videos, and access hundreds of digital and printable resources, including mind maps, quiz sheets, worksheets, teaching slides, and more. Ainsworth's Types of Attachment Mary Ainsworth expanded on Balby's work. Her work identified key behaviours that indicate the strength of an infant's attachment to their caregiver. One behaviour is infants maintaining closeness to their mother. This is known as using the mother as a secure base for exploration, frequently returning to her. Other important behaviours that indicate attachment include infants demonstrating anxiety around strangers, that they show distress when separated from their mother, their reaction when reunited with their mother when she returns, and how well the mother can interpret and respond to their infant's needs. Through her observations of these behaviours in a controlled observation called the strained situation, Ainsworth introduced a classification system for infant attachment that includes three types of infants. One of the types he identified is the insecure avoidant or type A attachment. Infants with this attachment style tend to keep a certain level of detachment from their mothers. They explore their environment freely without frequently turning to their mother as a secure base. They have limited stranger anxiety, not showing significant distress around unfamiliar faces. When separated from their mother, they display little to no distress, and their reaction upon a return is typically indifferent. These behaviours seem to be mirrored in their mothers, as the caregivers often show less responsiveness to their children's needs and emotions than other mothers. Ainsworth suggests this lack of sensitivity on the part of the mother might explain the child's avoidant attachment behaviours. Infants with a secure type B attachment type feel confident exploring their surroundings, but often return to their mother as a safe base. When encountering strangers, these infants will be cautious, showing moderate stranger anxiety. If the mother leaves, they'll be distressed, but have a positive and quick recovery when she returns, often continuing their exploration and play soon after. This attachment type is due to the caregiver's sensitive and consistent responsiveness to the infant's needs. Infants with an insecure resistant type C attachment style appear less confident in exploring their surroundings. They are clingy, staying close to their mother. Their reactions to strangers are defined by high anxiety, and they become very distressed when separated from their mother. But when she returns, their emotions can be complex. They may show a desire for closeness and comfort, but push her away showing resentment. The behaviour of these infants often mirrors the unpredictable nature of their caregivers, who are sometimes responsive to their needs, but may be neglectful or inconsistent at other times. Ainsworth's Strange Situation Ainsworth's strained situation uses a structured observational technique with two observers hidden behind a one-way mirror. The strained situation is a complicated study, and while I'll tell you about each stage, don't worry about memorizing it precisely. Mostly I want you to consider how the stages are designed to reveal the infant and mother's responses. Firstly, the mother and infant enter a room with two chairs and some toys. At this point, the infant's willingness to explore and use the mother's secure base is assessed. A stranger enters the room, begins a conversation with the mother, and tries to play with the infant. At this point, stranger anxiety is assessed by observing the infant's reactions to the stranger's presence. Next, the mother leaves the room and the infant is alone with the stranger. At this stage, separation anxiety is observed as the mother leaves and the infant's reactions to being comforted by the stranger recorded. The mother then returns and the stranger leaves. The observers focus on the infant's reunion behavior. Observers watch to see if the infant can calm down and if they seek proximity and reassurance. The mother leaves again, now the infant is alone. The infant's ability to deal with stress and their emotional responses to solitude are observed. Then the stranger re-enters and interacts with the infant. Again, stranger anxiety is evaluated along with the infant's receptiveness to comfort from the stranger. Finally, the mother returns and reunion behavior is observed again. That is the strained situation, 
But again, don't worry about the exact order of the stages, but how the study is carefully designed to assess a range of infant behaviours by varying the situation. Ainsworth's research identified three primary attachment styles based on patterns of behaviour during the strain situation. They are the secure, insecure avoidant and insecure resistant types I outlined earlier in the video. Let's quickly review how infants of each type behaved in the strain situation. Secure type B infants were the most common, making up two thirds of the sample. These infants typically displayed moderate stranger anxiety and distress when the mother departed, but were easily comforted when she returned. Their behavior suggests trust in the caregiver's responsiveness. The mothers of these infants often showed consistent sensitive responsiveness. Insecure infants made up the other third of the sample. Avoidant type A was the most common insecure type at 22% of the sample. These infants had low stranger anxiety and appeared indifferent to the mother's departure and return, meaning they didn't seem to care. Typically, the mothers of these children showed low sensitive responsiveness. Insecure resistant type C was the rarest type, accounting for only 12% of the sample. These infants showed intense distress during separation and ambivalent behavior when she re-entered the room meaning they seemed to both seek and resist contact when the mother returned. This attachment style was often associated with inconsistent motherly responsiveness. So, Ainsworth's study suggests there are distinct attachment patterns in infants, and maternal sensitivity has a role in shaping these attachment types. Evaluations As a structured observation, the strain situation carefully controls the experience of each infant, and the behavioural categories are well defined. This focus on standardization and control allows other researchers to replicate the study and compare their findings. We can also evaluate the strain situation positively for its predictive validity. Children identified as securely attached often show positive social, emotional, and academic outcomes later in life. For example, McCarthy's study followed up on women assessed as infants using the strain situation, finding that securely attached infants were the most likely to form strong and enduring relationships in adulthood. However, there are some issues with the strain situation. It could be a culture-bound test, which means that as it was developed within the American cultural context, it may not be appropriate to apply it to child-rearing in other cultures, as there's a potential for misinterpretation. It's essential to recognize that different cultures might have unique child-rearing practices or values that could influence the infant's behavior. Labeling these children as insecure is an example of cultural bias. In the next part of the video, I'll give you some examples that you can use to develop this evaluation. We can use the term imposed ethic here. This is when we claim a researcher has argued their cultural norms should be the standard for all cultures. There are also criticisms of the study's environment. The highly controlled setting of the strange situation doesn't mimic the familiarity of the home, which might influence both the child and mother's behaviours. Given that the adult participants are aware of the observation, it might have inadvertently affected the mother's actions who may have wanted to appear more caring than usual. There is a convincing alternate perspective that challenges the conclusions of a strange situation. Kagan argues what's been observed isn't attachment style, instead it's the biological temperament of the child, suggesting that some infants are born more challenging than others. This would explain not only the child's behavior, but also the mother's, who may struggle to satisfy the demands of a highly reactive child. Cultural variations in attachment, Van Eijendorn. Van Eijendorn gathered the data from studies conducted in eight countries representing a range of cultures. All of them used a strange situation to assess infant attachment. This large meta-analysis included over 2,000 infants across 32 studies. Here is a table of Van Eijendorn's findings. You don't need to memorize this, but we should be able to outline what Van Eijendorn discovered. Overall, regardless of the country, a secure attachment was the most prevalent type and resistant was typically the rarest attachment style. Avoidant attachment was more frequent in individualistic Western cultures, while resistant attachment was more likely in collectivist, typically non-Western countries. An interesting finding is that the differences between individual studies within the same country were larger than the differences between countries. We'll talk more about this in the evaluations. Important individual findings include Germany, which had the most avoidant infants at 35%. Japan and Israel had the highest count of insecure resistant at 27 and 29%. China recorded the lowest level of secure attachment at only 50%. And the UK had the most secure, 75%. So what can we conclude from Van Eijendorn's meta-analysis? 
while the dominance of secure attachment as the most common attachment across all countries is evidence of a universal preference towards a secure attachment style, potentially rooted in biology. That being said, cultural differences that influence parenting do play a significant role. The German focus on encouraging independence in their children may explain the high number of avoidant infants. On the other hand, the Japanese practice of mothers keeping their infants very close in the first few years might explain the infant's strong reactions to separation that led to so many being classified as insecure. It's likely for many of the Japanese infants, the strange situation was the first time ever they'd been left alone outside the home. Each stage in the strange situation is supposed to last three minutes. In the Takahashi study, in the left alone stage, the infant's crying was so intense that for 90% of the infants, this stage was cut short. Evaluations Temporal validity is likely an issue. It's been 50 years since Ainsworth's original study, and many of the studies, including Van Eijendorf's meta-analysis, are now older than 40 years. Family dynamics in most cultures have changed significantly in this time. In 2014, Salmonelli used the strained situation to assess attachment in modern Italian infant mother pairs. Compared to data from historical Italians, there was a noticeable reduction in the percentage of securely attached infants, while a proportion of avoidant infants had risen. Simonelli believes this trend isn't necessarily negative. Instead, it might just be infants adapting to modern life, with mothers often away due to work and infants frequently cared for by childminders. Infants might be developing ways to cope without showing excessive emotion every time they're separated or in the presence of a stranger. The secure attachment style came out on top in every country studied. This dominance of secure attachments across various cultures can be seen as supporting Bobby's idea that, beyond some cultural variation, this seems to be an inherited biological drive to parent in a way that produces a secure, monotropic attachment between the infant and the mother. A serious limitation of Van Eijendorn's meta-analysis is that only one study was conducted for some countries. The entire population of any culture can't be fully represented by one study with a relatively small sample size. And to make things worse, when more than one study was included for a country, it was found there was more variation within countries than between them. As an example, here are the results for the two Israeli studies. The study with a large number of type C infants was conducted in a communal farm called a kibbutz, while the other study was conducted on a more urban population. This shows that when it comes to attachment, cultures are monolithic blocks. There is significant diversity within them. For instance, a study might focus on an urban population while ignoring rural infants. After 32 studies, the scale of Van Eijendorn's meta-analysis is impressive, and there's a significant advantage to having such a massive sample size. Given the large amount of data, if any studies were carried out poorly or had abnormal results, their impact would be diluted. This gives us more confidence in the overall pattern of findings. Returning to an evaluation I gave for the strange situation, we can use here. The observation was initially developed and conducted with Western samples and assumed to apply globally. It's tempting to think that what works for one culture will work seamlessly for another. However, this assumption risks cultural bias. In the strange situation, secure attachment is argued to be the best type. But it's far more common in individualistic Western cultures, with 75% in the British sample and as low as 50% in the Chinese. This risks cultural bias, as it's ethnocentric to assume your cultural norms are superior. I want to thank everyone over on Patreon for supporting the channel. Because of you, I've been able to teach part-time, meaning I can make Psych Boost on YouTube for everyone. And a special thank you to Kat Posnick and Ahmed Romani for supporting at the developer level. I do have extra resources that are exclusive to my patrons. So if you decide to sign up, you can grab those over my website. And these include over 100 exam question tutorial videos, of course, including questions on the attachment unit. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next Psych Boost video.